And it is time for yet another episode of Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. I am your host, Doug Langford, coming to you from the Outlaw Off-Road Studios in Greensboro, North Carolina. Gave myself a little bit of a free upgrade there. And <laughs> Caleb Forbes, my like co-host, it. coming to you from um, from the Casting Couch Studios <laughs> down around Lake Norman. We're just going to call it Lake Norman. Did you That's see the comment that somebody wrote that said you were back to the, uh, in last week's new... I guess the yeah. new setup, they said, oh, Caleb brought back the casting couch. Did you see that comment? Yeah, I commented back and said the casting couch will always stay. <laughs> That's amazing. It's so amazing. I, I have one in here in my office, but uh, yeah, we're not we're never going to put that on camera because I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be subjected to that <laughs> from from other people. But but I digress. We've got another episode, a great episode coming up for you guys in our uh, our new format, which I really liked it last week um, and looking forward to doing it. Um, going forward, we're going to talk about uh, a little current events today. We're going to talk about a couple of um, things coming up in the off-road world and the new Nitto Tire teaser mm-hmm. thingy from Facebook the other day that's got the world talking a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about that, see what you think about it, see what I think about it, and then we're going to get into some, I think we're going to talk about some truck stuff today, um, yeah. where the truck market is, talk a little bit about that. And then, um, yeah, we'll see what. Uh, and then I think you've got some. I think you've even got some mailbag questions again at the end for me. I not, do. yeah, not quite the lightning round like last week. We're actually going to have some legit questions this week, yeah. right? So, yeah. We without further questions. ado, I say we jump right into the episode. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. And just like that, we're back. So, yeah, let's get right into it, man. What um, I know we've got some, uh, we went over some events last week and then i found another one and you brought up one that i should have known about the uh the first one being the uh the jeep jeep jeepers jamboree jeepers out of the rubicon the trail rubicon. the original jeepers jamboree not not the other ones that claim to have whatever credentials this is the one that's like i want to say this is the 72nd anniversary or 72nd annual Jeez. jeepers and yeah so out there at the rubicon uh out there in georgetown california um, that is one that is, we talked about our bucket list trip, um, a couple episodes ago. That is that the Rubicon's on my bucket list for sure. So, yeah, that's insane. We, we did that trip and I've mentioned a couple of times I've done the Rubicon obviously, but we scheduled it <clears throat> deliberately to be immediately preceding the Jamboree because it's actually pretty cool. So we went in, we went into the trail because if you do it right before the Jamboree, that's as, that's as hard as it can get. Right. Um, all year long they haven't there's been no maintenance on it. it they really haven't touched it in a while because what happens is jeep jamboree Jam, jeepers jamboree mm-hmm. sends in this crew of like a hundred freaking rigs and they basically clean up the trail um wow. they, they they pull all the loose rocks anything that's true they, they just make that trail i mean for lack of a better term they make it easier um mm-hmm. because they're bringing through jeeps that you know, maybe a little closer to stock, um, you know, because obviously the Rubicon Trail, the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, that trail needs to be able to be completed by a stock Rubicon. And over the course of 9, 10, 11 months, it gets pretty, it gets, it can get pretty gnarly. Um, yeah. So they go in there and they fix it up. They kind of smooth it out, grade it out a little bit. It's certainly not a gravel, tra- a gravel road by any means, but they definitely clean it up and make it more, I guess we'll say more passable. Um, but they do a lot of work to that trail and, the, the result of that is it, it maintains the trail really, really well so that it stays in really good shape. Anything that's been damaged over that year or whatever, they're out there, they're cleaning up. But it is something to behold. We woke up from camp um, one morning and we had to wait to leave because they were coming in backwards 
from the Tahoe side. And it was just Jeep after Jeep after Jeep after Jeep with trailers and hauling stuff and equipment and, you know, all this stuff. And it was, it took them, it took, we just sat there and watched them for like a couple hours just wow. coming down the trail with stuff going back, going backwards. Cause we were only, I mean, at Rubicon Springs, you're basically done with the trail itself. You're, you know, it's, it's not really much after that. You climb up the, you climb up and out of the valley and then you do the dirt road back to the parking lot there on the backside of some random neighborhood in Lake Tahoe. But, um, I know it's a very cool event. I know they gear it towards kind of more of the everybody type of thing. So that's a cool event. Um, obviously, that's going on, I think, next week, right? The 25th? Is that right when it starts? Yeah, 25th to the 28th, I want to say, is what I looked up and saw. Right. So obviously, you're not going to get into it this year. They're probably out there. They're probably out there right now or this weekend going to be cleaning up the trail, doing that doing that massive thing. But if you want to get that on your bucket list for, for 2025, 2026, I highly recommend doing it. The trail is insane. The views are awesome. Rubicon Springs is cool. There is a reason that it's an iconic trail. Uh, and I'm here to tell you it earns that iconic status oh, yeah. for sure. So, um, so if, definitely if I take the LJ up the list. Rubicon Trail, does that mean my LJ Rubicon? Uh, we, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to call it that. <laughs> then you can put stickers. You can put Rubicon stickers exactly. on your LJ and the, you know, yeah. Then God won't look down and strike you with lightning. Probably still will. <laughs> you, you, you can't do that. Yeah. Don't do but that. But at least so, it'll be Rubicon rated at that point. Rubic. Ooh, I like it. Rubicon rated. I like it. I like, I like it. it. Um, so that is, um, that is one event. And then I realized that I had forgotten last week to mention one on the East coast which is the Wildwood, New Jersey, the Bronco invasion. Um, Ooh, yeah. I know Jeep invasion, Smoky Mountain Jeep invasion kind of created Smoky Mountain Bronco invasion two years ago or a year ago. Yeah, um, I think it's, I think this year's their third year, I think, if that's, if I'm not mistaken. And a lot of people know about that, but I was not that aware. I had heard of it and I was getting emails to sign up as a vendor. And obviously I, I can't make it because it starts, it's the 19th, it's this Friday, um, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday up in Wildwood, New Jersey. Which is a really cool tourist town. Um, they like their Jeep events up there. Good people up there. Uh, there's a there's you know there's a Jeep event up there every year. I think they just had it back in May, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that might have been Ocean City, but up up there in that that whole Maryland up to Jersey Beach thing, um, they like their they like their off road events. And I've you know I hear good things about them most of the time. So Wildwood Bronco Invasion starts Friday this Friday the nineteenth. And it ends on Sunday. So obviously this is something that is something if you're hearing this episode, you actually can still shoot up there. Um, that is something you can buy tickets on site. Wildwood, New Jersey, Bronco Invasion. You can go up there. Uh, they got a ton of hotels, Airbnbs and all that. They are definitely used to the tourism. It is nothing new for them. So um, right. definitely check that out. If it's, it's not on your schedule for this year, you got a Bronco, um, check it out next year. I think they... I think they kind of treat Bronco sports that way too. I don't know if I would, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but is it really a Bronco? <laughs> <sighs> I don't know, man. Why didn't they just call it? Why did they call that a Bronco sport? That's another episode. No, no, there, it's there not a freaking many, Bronco. No, it's there's, not a there's a couple names that could have been really cool for that. Like, well, that's another episode. <laughs> that could be the flex before it, it could be the reiteration of the flex before it yeah, could have been a Bronco. Absolutely. I mean, I know it was a marketing thing. I get it, and we're going to make some little accessories for it. You can turn it into a little overlander. It's supposed to be like a Subaru. Okay, I get it, but I don't know. I think they missed the mark on that one. It's definitely not a yeah. Bronco. Come I on, agree. Bronco sport lovers. I'm going to catch some hate for that <laughs> one, but that's what I've got for events. Obviously, we've still got um, a few spots left in trail days. We really haven't pushed that on the social medias yet because I wanted to do, you know, see how many spots we had left and reorganize beginner versus intermediate versus advanced. Um, I did talk to Armando at Hero Off-Road a couple of days ago earlier this week. Uh, donations already rolling in, so thank you everybody who's not only signed up for the Trail Days event, but has also gone ahead um, and made those donations. Again, we do ask for those of you who have signed up, please make those donations at the link at theoutlawoffroad.com forward slash Trail Days. There is the link in there to go to Hero Off-Road to make that donation. Please, please, please use that link and that link only so we can keep track of everybody who's donated. Um, but yeah, Armando is super happy about that. Um, he actually texted me the numbers and I was like, Hey bro, there's way more coming. Like you're going to yeah. have more. And he's like, no, 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 no. I was messaging you to tell you how good it was. <laughs> I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. No, all like, right. Armando, Thought you we were threatening second, me with bodily harm. Like, sir, we have a second wave coming. Uh, this oh, was just oh, the first Lord. wave. 
No, but he was um, messaging me to tell me how much, how how great it was. Yeah, I was like, all right, good. So I don't have Armando threatening me with bodily harm, which <laughs> makes me feel better. So right. So yeah, we definitely mention, have that. Yeah, I was gonna say I do want to mention that even if you can't attend, you can still donate and maybe send a veteran in in place. Um, you can make that donation and and just just have it there for someone who can't afford to do that. Um, but the more the merrier. We're not going to limit that donation amount whatsoever. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he, and you can just donate. You can still go to the website, theoutlawoffroad.com slash trail days. You can still go and not sign up and donate. That's not mm-hmm. a problem. Yep. You can donate 20 times if you want. All of this money goes, I cannot say this enough, every single dime that is donated goes to Hero Off-Road. We do not see a dime of it. Not yep. Outlaw Off-Road, not this show, not the sponsors. Even the sponsors aren't paying us to be sponsors of the event. They're donating to Hero Off-Road. So this is 100% for Hero Off-Road, all about Hero Off-Road. It's just we happen to get to wheel as a result. So I right. want to make that make that perfectly clear. And then finally, before we get into our, our truck discussion, we've got a little bit of news. Outlaw Off-Road, the newest location in Greenville, Spartanburg area of South Carolina. I think the shop's actually in Greer. Uh, right there next to the BM, big BMW plant, dead middle of Greenville and Spartanburg, kind of the the uh, the upper hills, the upstate, I think they call it, upstate mm-hmm. upstate South Carolina, slated to open here in August. So yeah. um, we are here in mid-July. Uh, I believe they got the keys for the place a couple days ago, and they are running some electrical and putting some equipment in, and we'll actually be starting to take deposits and start scheduling here in the next uh, in the next week or so. Uh, talk to David Conkin. He's the guy running that running the show down there. He is the guy that owns that location. Uh, him and Tammy, his wife Tammy Conkin. Um, he's been affiliated with Outlaw for a couple of years now. Good dude. Had him in the had him as part of the team for for several years, and now he's elevated with his wife Tammy up to ownership status. So looking forward to having that one. Uh, if you're in that area, definitely hit those guys up. Uh, I know the Facebook page is live, so feel free to get in touch with those guys. They've been out to several events. They're locally. I think they were out at one. I think Tammy was out at one this past weekend. So they're like definitely they're out getting down there every single weekend down no, there, all the time. Dude, all they're the time. always they got a couple doing of jeeps something. between them too. Yeah. I think they've got a JK and a JK and a JT. I think no, uh, she's got the JT. Yes, if not two JKs, JT. if not two JTs, they got they got JT. some jeeps. Yeah, yeah they are well invested in the Jeep <laughs> community. Yeah. yeah, they've got a couple. I told him, I was like, bro, just sure. get one of run of the Jeeps and buy a Bronco or buy something. Like, he's just, he is all in on the Jeep stuff, but uh, God bless him for it. I love it. He's going to be, he's going to be, um, that, that location is going to be a good addition to yeah. the Outlaw Off-Road family. And then we should have some news fairly soon in the next, I don't know, couple months on the location that's going to be after Greenville Spartanburg that we're starting to work on so <laughs> that one's also coming down the pipe pretty soon too so that's uh that's how we'll wrap up our little current events and what's going on and what's coming up so what is our um what's our what's our topic today Kyla? what are we going to talk about a little bit well we're going to talk about trucks but before we get into trucks um uh, there is something else that's it's a topic of discussion uh you mentioned it at the very beginning of this uh, Nitto released a little teaser on something, and uh, I kind of oh, want to yeah. see if you can if you can guess uh, what they're going to do. So I'm going to throw a couple images up, and then I've got a video that I grabbed from I want to say their Facebook page. Uh, so I'm going to flash a couple images up here, Tire and I want you to tell me if time. you think you know what's coming. Hit me. All right, image number one. All right, we got some tire lugs. Okay, tire lugs. Lots of tire lugs. Almost looks like a, it looks like a recon grappler tire lug. It's very, very nitto ish with the blocking the way that is. Uh, we got a shoulder there, not quite as aggressive as like a ridge grappler or a mud grappler or, or a trail grappler, but definitely got some shoulder there. All right. And here we go. Okay. G3. Haven't seen a G in a while on a nitto tire. Boy, I almost had a like a like a seizure from them hitting those hitting those images so fast. Jeez, um, it was quick. So it was quick. <laughs> I am going to assume that, and this is needed. I'm going to assume that that is the new the new iteration of the Terra Grappler uh, that is going to replace the G2. the The way I had heard it a couple of years ago was that the Recon Grappler, um, good tire, which came out a few years ago, was going to replace 
the Terra Grappler. Of course, the Terra Grappler of, you know, Toyota TRD Pro fame um, has been an AT, kind of AT tire mm -hmm. on OE fitments for years and years and years. Um, it's a very, it's a, it's always been known as a kind of a mild all-terrain. Mm -hmm. um, not really aggressive sidewall, but not really aggressive tread. Of course, that made it nice to put as an OE fitment because it looks all terrainy, but it can still be a stock fitment and have that nice, quiet, smooth ride. I think the Recon Grappler missed the mark a little bit in replacing the Terra Grappler G2 because it is it has far more in common with the Recon Grappler, which is supposed to be an AT-MT hybrid. Mm -hmm. The Recon Grappler was supposed to be the AT, the Ridge Grappler being the RT, and then the Trail Grappler being the MT. I think the Recon Grappler is a little more aggressive, a little too aggressive to fill that. I don't think you're going to be seeing a lot of Recon Grapplers as OE fitments. So maybe this is Nitto saying, we hear you Terra Grappler fans. Could be. Yeah. And we're going to give you a G3. The Terra Grappler was a pretty pretty popular tire. So I, I personally popular. think, I mean, I can't think of any other tire that's gone through two iterations where there is a Generation 3 tire. So I think this is a mm -mm. slightly more aggressive Terra Grappler with a with a nice rugged sidewall. Yeah, I'd, I'd be fine if it was just as mild as it was before. Maybe you put a little bit of aesthetics on the sidewall to make it look mm -hmm. more aggressive because, I mean, we've talked about it before. That's where the market's going. The market wants that look. Even if it's not necessarily tied to off-road performance. Uh, I'm looking at you, Honda Passport. <laughs> um, uh, there are models out there, many models out there, that have gone for that sport off-road appearance some being tied to performance, some not being tied to performance. So mm -hmm. maybe this is Nitto answering the bell there. And if it is, um, I think that's I think that's a good thing. I like Nitto. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I am a Nitto fan. Uh, I ran Nittos on the race car for uh, 2023. Um, didn't I have no problem with them. I've run Nittos on personal vehicles for quite some time. So um, I'm here for it. If it's a if it's just a slightly updated, redesigned G2 with a more aggressive sidewall. I mean, a uh, shoulder. I think that's fine. I think that'd be great. I'd it, it definitely fills a spot be. in the market for sure. I think so, for sure. Yeah. They kind of opened it up because if you go to Nitto's website right now and you look at G2, you can still see the Terra Grappler G2 on their website, but the fitments are like next to nada. They're yeah. just, it's, do, 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 it's clearly away. phasing out the G2. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Which I think that was the plan anyway. I don't know if they ever put it out publicly. I heard that. I don't know if that was public or not, uh, but I know the plan was to phase it out because I think the Recon Grappler was initially going to be the replacement but the recon grappler is just it's too aggressive to replace the g2 it's yeah. it's like a ridge grappler light versus what i think they wanted it to be it's a good tire uh i had those on my wife's old wagoneer but when i put them on there i looked at it, i was like mm, that's a little aggressive that's slightly aggressive so yeah i'm here for it i think that'd be a really good tire that may be something i mean honestly that could be a tire that i look at to put on the wife's expedition because we want a slightly more aggressive than what came on it, yeah. but not like Ridge Grappler, Recon Grappler aggressive. Um, mm -hmm. Not even like the Mickey Thompson, like the Baja 18, not even that crazy aggressive. So I think that could be, I'm hoping that's what it is. Fingers crossed, um, Nitto. I hope that's what it is. I would be pretty happy about that, I think, for a lot of people out there. And the crossover SUV market would love it. There's just, there's a whole lot of applications for it, for sure. I yeah, think that'd be good. I agree. Yeah. Uh, we will see probably in the next coming days. I'm sure Nitto will do a full release and, and press re press release and announcement on it with uh, some specs and video and, and everything. So uh, I'm sure Will Gentiles over there filming all that if he has not already filmed it. So that will, was probably his camera that was filming that stuff. You popped up. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I'm sure it was. <laughs> love you, Will. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to talk to him on this podcast one day, actually. Um, but moving right along. Uh, so trucks. <clears throat> Today is truck day. Um, I've noticed that we have not done a lot of truck specific content on this uh, podcast. So we are, um, I want to take a look at, especially in 2024, what is being advertised as offered capable trucks or the most offered capable trucks. Um, so we're going to leave out the, the luxury model trucks, the two wheel drive trucks, stuff like that. I don't really want, I don't think this ties into towing. I know most people buy a truck for towing. Um, but I think this in particular is more addressed. We probably just need to address the off-road capability side of it. Otherwise we, we would be here for four hours talking about trucks, but four so, days. um, yeah, I think we can just start off with the midsize range. Midsize me. I, I call that like mini truck. So like the Ranger, Colorado, Tacoma, that kind of thing. Yep. Ranger, Colorado, Canyon, AT4, okay. Tacoma, TRD. 
I'll even throw in a little bone to Nissan with the Frontier. It's not my favorite. But we'll get into that in a minute. Um, I mean, okay, we'll start with that Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. That's about it. Like <laughs> that's it. That's it. I, that, um, that moniker's been around a while. It has. Um, it has. But I mean, that's it's it's a it's a Nissan. It's a Frontier. I do. They do look cooler than they used to. Back in the day when I first started off road, like the mid '90s Nissan pickup, and that's all they called it. it had the three OV six yeah. in it. Yeah, it Those things were like what you wanted. Yeah. Like every if you had if you saw somebody pop up in a Nissan pickup with a three O, you were like, man, that dude's legit. <laughs> that was. You know, and I'm out there with my Ranger, you know, my Ranger XLT out there, you know, with my four cylinder two three. Now, granted, the two three in line of fours, there's a lot of those still running to this day. Oh yeah. Those things were insane. Half um, a million miles on them. Oh man. And that the that that motor still exists in Ford land. Mm-hmm. It's obviously updated in a newer generation, but the basic motor is still there. It's that good. Yeah. I think that was a Japanese produced Mazda motor back in the day and uh, it went back in the B23. It went in the Mazda 6. It went in the Mazda 3. Like, that motor has been everywhere. There's a 2.3 version now in the Explorer, even. Like, you can do yeah. the Explorer. It's a 2.3. I think it's a turbo or twin turbo. It's the EcoBoost mm-hmm. um, four-cylinder, but the base motor is still there. So, um, that's pretty good. So, But on that, on that with the Ranger, there is the Ranger Raptor. Yeah, that's the first one I really want to get into. That um, is an off-road that, capable. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pull up uh, some pictures over here so yeah. just so audiences watching on uh, so cool. YouTube can see what we're talking about here. So the Ranger Raptor is new for this year. I know this was a very, um, very much wanted release. It, it was released mm-hmm. overseas um, in Australia for several years. years ago, yeah. yeah. And the American market has been clamoring for this model of the Ranger to come out. We finally have it, so I'm gonna be honest with you, Doug. I'm a little bit, cool. um, I'm a little bit clueless to the new truck stuff. I have I've not been in the truck market nearly as much as if you have. So I'm kind of gonna gonna let you take the reins on this one, kind of explain high level overview of of what the Ranger is and what it's capable of. I mean, the Ranger is the quint to me. It's always been kind of the quintessential. I call them mini trucks. Um, I know they they have an official name, but I've always looked up as mini trucks. And when you when you talk to guys in the industry, that's what when you hear mini truck, this is what they're talking about. I am not nearly as versed on Ranger as I am like F one fifty, F two fifty, F three fifty, because I am at heart a truck guy. I've always been a truck guy. Probably always will be a truck guy. My daily driver is a truck. Always kind of pretty much has been. I throw in a little Jeep driving here and there, but I'm primarily a truck guy. I have owned a couple of Rangers. Um, I was recently doing a lot of research on some mini truck stuff because my father-in-law is a big Colorado guy. Was trying to get him in a ZR2. He ended up in a, uh, I think he ended up in a C71 Colorado. Nice little truck, but he's retired, so he can buy whatever he wants. Um, but yeah, it's basically, and it really is, it's a mini uh, F-150 Raptor. I mean, it's everything they do pretty much to the F-150 Raptor, they do to the Ranger. It's just different. You can see mm-hmm. the different styling cues. You can see the different fenders. You can see the different wheels. You can see, obviously, there's different suspension. And that's mostly what it is, wider track width. That's pretty much what they do to it. The interior's got some um, Ranger-esque um, things, but it's also been redesigned to be Raptor. It gets the Raptor graphics like the F-150, but at a much, much, much lower price tag. Uh, I know Jeremy Purick, uh, we've had on the show before, but at Rock Crawler has ordered one of these. And I think the one he ordered came in at like 50, 50 to 52. And wow. we were talking about, I was like, man, now I got to go freaking order one. <laughs> um, but they're really cool. I think, you know, if you, you know, if you want a Raptor that does not need to, you know, you, you mentioned a little bit of it. Towing capacities do take a hit on these off-road trucks. Um, yeah. And that is because of the suspension. They are a lot different and they are not generally, they are for off-road performance, not for towing ability and the type of suspension wheelbase is it coil spring is it leaf spring what what shock is in it what spring is in it what's the spring rate all that stuff goes into tow capacity so i'm not buying one of these if i'm towing a you know a a big camper or something like that but if i'm doing that i'm gonna buy a different truck anyway but if you want to tow a little overland camper i mean they're they're gonna they got decent tow capacity for what they are and the ranger's known to do that anyway so uh but this one this one does that uh we've got the um the colorado which is the ZR2, uh, which is the same thing as the GMC Canyon AT4, same mm-hmm. truck. Um, it's just GMC's version versus um, Chevy's version. And then there's obviously, everybody knows the Tacoma um, TRD, 
which at TRD is when you start getting lockers and stuff like that. Of course, TRD Pro gets you a little bit more. So all of those, I would say, the Ford version, the GM version, and the Toyota version are all heavily modified from what a stock one would be. Mm -hmm. um, both Raptor probably being the heaviest modified um, over those. And I'm lumping the Chevy and the GM together. Um, they are heavily modified for off-road performance, and they generally deliver. Raptor probably being, of that, Raptor probably being the most off-road capable. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe, I I might give it to Chevy just by a little bit, because I know the, the the clearance is a little bit more. But man, that Tacoma's pretty stout too, especially when you look at the aftermarket availability for stuff. I mean, that comes in and immediately you can do anything you want to a Toyota um, and save crazy suspension stuff. It's not really terribly that much more expensive, especially when you're looking at what you're going to pay for a Ranger Raptor versus what you're going to pay for like a Colorado ZR2 versus what you pay for a Toyota TRD Pro. Um, and you could obviously do TRD Sport and all that, but they're all pretty comparable, and they're all going to do stuff. You want to go fast in the desert, buy a Ranger Raptor. You want to put a mm -hmm. rooftop tent on it and go out and have fun, you're probably going to buy a Tacoma. Um, so, you know, I personally am a ZR2 driver. Mine's a little bit bigger than that, but I am a, I am a Chevy driver, and I have reasons for that, but... I, I like those trucks. I personally don't have a reason to run them, but I think if you're, I think that truck is for somebody who wants the cool guy off road stuff mm -hmm. and either A, doesn't need the room payload towing capacity of a half ton, three quarter ton, one ton, and, or maybe they just want a smaller size. Maybe the most they're ever going to haul is the kids to school, but they want some off road ability. So there's definitely a customer base for this size truck and off-road i think it's bigger than most people realize and we'll see how the ranger raptor sells but i think it's going to do well i know the i know all of the trail boss stuff and the zr2 stuff and the at4 stuff from gm is sold very well as i can mm -hmm. attest in trying to find one um and then on the four and then on the uh i mean obviously with toyota the trd stuff's been a staple for a decade i mean yeah, plus we'll, we'll get into point. those here in just a second too yeah um, no, I definitely stuff. think there's a there's a spot in the field for the Ranger Raptor for sure. Um, the price point, I think, is, well, honestly, the price point's right there with a, a loaded TRD Pro. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't think they're too far off on that. It's just the people who don't want to go to a full-size truck still love that mid-size truck and the smaller, narrower track width of it. Um, sure. I do like what they do. I'm pretty sure they hopped up the Ranger Raptor's engine a little bit, too. I think it's they putting did. out a little bit more horsepower mm -hmm. than the regular Ranger. Um, but speaking of the other models that we have, I've got some, uh, some stuff out there to talk about too. So also Which in that mid, mid size truck category, you mentioned the Colorado and the Canyon. Mm -hmm. I'll flash some pictures up over those as well, just so everyone can kind of see what we're looking at here as well. Mm, and that would be our, that would be the Colorado, Colorado ZR2. ZR2. Um, yep. I can't tell if it's with or without the bison package. The bison package is pretty freaking awesome, though, too. That's a bison. Yeah, so bison, you can tell. If, if you want to look at the outside, the, the dead giveaway is the wheels and the bumper. Mm -hmm. If you want to look at that. And there's sometimes there's a badge on them. I don't, I don't, the Colorado, for some reason, it's not real visible, but you can tell by that one that's a bison for sure. So going towards the uh, the Chevy side, what are what are the features we're looking at on the uh, the Colorado and Canyon? So the biggest the biggest claim to fame on the on the Chevy GM side, they don't change the track width like Ford does with the Ranger Raptor or any of the mm -hmm. Raptors. Mm -hmm. They do, however, give it a lift, um, which I think is a little bit more than what Ranger Raptor gets. It's probably the most uh, the tallest from the factory over the ones that we're talking about. Um, I know in the three quarter ton and, and the three quarter ton side, it is the the, the ZR2 2500 is the tallest production truck in the world at six foot ten inches on the ZR2. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's it's big. Um, so on the on the small truck side, they don't do a ton with they don't do anything with the track width. However, they are using internal spool sh they're using spool valve shocks, which is a completely different type of shock, and it's pretty freaking sick. Um, I can tell you, you could, they're, they're, they're pretty nice. Um, it's, I think that might be the only production truck out there using spool valves in the shocks and they're pretty, they're pretty freaking gnarly. You want to look up in the, in there, you see a little bit of bronze and blue, you know, you've got some, mm -hmm. I think I call them DSSV, 
um, and they are pretty freaking awesome. They handle, they eat up some stuff with that IFS front. Uh, they're, they're, that's pretty legit, pretty cool stuff. Um, obviously, they change the wheels, they change the tires. The front end, it's a styling package. And then in the interior, you get different colors. Uh, the ZR2s get like a light gray, dark gray hybrid interior with yellow stitching. Which on the first ZR2 I owned, I was like, eh, you know, whatever. And then on now, I now I love it. I don't even notice mm-hmm. the yellow anymore, but I kind of love that it's kind of distinct like that. Um, that one, obviously, we're looking at there is not a Bison. You can tell about that. You can look at the bumper, and then you can look at those wheels, and that is a that is a ZR2, and it has the step the that little step side, um, but it is not the ZR. It's not the Bison. Now the Bison is just an AEV, and they call it Bison because the AEV logo is a is a buffalo bison whatever yeah I, absolutely i think it's overpriced for what it is but you know i said that on a i said that on a zrt group a couple of weeks ago and got lit up for saying it was basically overpriced because it is it's i you know it's not you know for what it is i think it's fine but it's you know it's a stamp steel bumper it's not anything fabricated it's right. different wheels you're still getting cooler wheels with the zr2 it's just different cool wheels so it's it's basically an appearance package and then there's the aev logo basically stitched into the seats in some places so the bison package is is completely appearance <clears throat> with some better bumpers, I guess, is really about yeah. what it is. But everything else, ZR2, stays the same. And it's really the same thing on AT4. You've got an appearance yeah, yeah, package. I'll, I'll pop over And then there's now. the AT4X, which X yeah. is the bison package. So if you've got an X, okay. AT4X is the same thing as ZR2 bison. It's the so same it's just stuff. A, a, basically, it's just a dealer factory AEV package. Yes, correct. Okay. 100%. Yep. Still great trucks. My awesome. my personal truck is a twenty five hundred ZR two non Bison. Um, I love it. I love my ZR two. Absolutely freaking love it. Great yeah, I mean, truck. It's a beautiful. It's a really oh, good a looking truck. truck. Yep. that's an X. Yeah, I think it, both of those images were X's. Uh, definitely <sighs> a good looking truck. Um, super good. I know a lot truck. of the the outlaw guys have have kind of moved towards the uh, the fifteen hundred AT four, which we will talk about here in just a second. But yeah, that's that is a yeah, such Gerald's a good got truck. a. Gerald bought one, but he ended up with a – he's in like a 2500 Yukon Denali Ultimate or something. But Josh yeah. down in Charlotte has a 2500 GMC AT4 mm-hmm. and and loves it. I think Jesse over in Nashville, he's not he's not really Nashville, but he's married to the the Nashville. No, he's got They've a – got a uh, He's got F-250, a 350. F-350. F-350. Yeah. F-350. Good truck. Um, Great truck, yeah. Ben at Outlaw Off-Road Charlotte uh, has a – I want to say an AT4 X, um, black on black. It is, whew, it is sharp. And it's a 2500 as well. That They're great is, looking is trucks. Beautiful. Like I love it. I mean, I got rid of a Ford F350 to buy my ZR2. I'm not, I'm not hating on it. I'm not hating yeah. on it. Yeah. Well, and then moving right along here, the next one and the last one we're really going to talk about here is probably, I don't want to say the crowd favorite, but I'm, I'm going to say the crowd favorite because when you talk about a midsize off road truck. I mean, the only the it's first truck that comes up is gonna, is going to be yeah, the Toyota is. Tacoma. It is. Uh, so yeah. So 2024 got a redesign, uh, got a facelift. It got the more aggressive styling, which I definitely love. It got some really cool updates into the interior as well. Uh, do you know of anything that happened as far as suspension, um, power plant, or anything like that that changed for 2024? Yeah, the power plant still sucks. <laughs> Hate to burst Toyota people's <laughs> bubble. I have now test driven one of these. Um, a TRD Pro, um, and <sighs> so disappointed. Um, really? It definitely got um, new looks. I mean, the suspension is basically still set up the same way. It's an upgraded suspension over the standard, but the the exterior obviously got updated. The powertrain got a little updated, and the interior got massively overhauled. Everything except the powertrain is pretty legit. Uh, it looks good. I like the look of it. Um I like the interior, but it still feels underpowered. Um, I don't know what happened there, but it definitely still feels underpowered. I've talked to others who've said the same thing. Um, you know, I, I don't know. There is supposed to be that iForce Max, which is not – I did not get in one of those yet, so I'm hoping that mm-hmm. is different. There's supposed to be like a 40 or 50 horsepower difference, something like that. So I'm hoping – I'm hoping that makes a difference, but I did drive the standard. It was a, I think it was a TRD off road or TRD. It was a TRD, but it was not a TRD Pro, um, and was a little bit disappointed. Was a little hmm. bit disappointed, um, but at the end of the day, it is a Toyota Tacoma. Other than that, it is extremely capable off road. They are 
as bulletproof a small truck as you're going to get, mm-hmm. um, which is some of the reason I think they are kind of underpowered. They they don't let it have all that it could, I think, in, in a small exchange for reliability, probably. Um, but it's a good-looking truck. It's a good-performing truck. It does what it needs to do. Now, you're not going to go do Ranger Raptor things and huck it over a freaking sand dune, but you want to put a rooftop tent on that. You want to live out of it. You want to go off-grid with it. Like, that is kind of the... That is the market for the Tacoma, and it's just as comfortable driving around town, um, you know, going and getting groceries and picking the kids up from school and going to, you know, soccer practice, hockey practice, baseball, whatever. Um, it's just a little more updated now. So I love, I love the new aesthetics. Um, yeah. Interior is no, nice. Looks, looks yeah, it's good. I just wish the, you know, I had, I think I had higher expectations for the engine. It's definitely better. It's just not what I, it's not what I thought it was going to be. So Yeah. Do so we at least be, give a nod? Uh, do we not give it a nod at all, even because that size to the Gladiator Rubicon? Can we not say, oh, at least put it in an honorable mention? No, nothing. Um, so there's two reasons why I didn't list the the Gladiator in here. For one, I feel like if you're shopping for a truck and you want a Gladiator, you're not going to look at any other truck. You're not going to compare models. You're not going to do anything. Gladiator owners. Because you're saying you're like a Jeeper. Jeep. And you're Jeep people Jeep. are going to stay with that Jeep. Yeah. Okay. Guys who are looking no, for <clears throat> the best off-road mid-sized truck i feel like they're gonna land in that ranger canyon colorado tacoma maybe a frontier uh they're gonna land in that space and unless they're a hardcore jeep guy they're probably gonna stay away from it because when you look at features um price for what you're getting um i hate to say yeah this, that's but a good the point gladiator the gladiator kind of is is out of the group chat there it's it's so expensive for what it is and yes it's got a it's got a solid front axle but the capability of of these other trucks in the same price point far outweigh it the interior is way nicer actually most of them Uh, are less yeah most of them are lower in price point absolutely for sure the range Um, i can get a ranger raptor for less than i can get a gladiator rubicon or a mohawk yeah and yeah i was about to say and to get anything close to Mm. a ranger raptor you're going to be in gladiator mojave territory um, and those are still fairly expensive, especially you have a loaded one that's as nice as the interior as a Ranger Raptor in a yeah. base in a base spec Ranger Raptor is still going to be miles ahead nicer than a Gladiator. So that's that's the real reason why I didn't put it in there. Um, however, um, we can talk about the best Jeep brands <laughs> uh, for those needs and kind of kind of rank yeah, Jeep brands on, on another podcast. Um, yep. But for this one, I just kind of wanted to stay. Uh, Pretty pretty close at heart with the main core trucks that everyone knows and loves as your mid-sized pickup truck category. Sorry, Gladiator, you didn't make the truck show, other than honorable <laughs> mention, to only be mentioned in that you're not being mentioned. It, exactly. <laughs> Damn it, Jeep guys. Um, Sorry, guys. So with that said, though, going over the basic, uh, and like I said, I wanted to kind of keep this high level. I didn't want to d- dive in and read off you know, line by line for oh, a yeah, spec not, sheet yeah, we don't for every for single vehicle. We'd be here forever. Um, of those in the midsize category, what is your, what's your number one, like your number one pick? Oh man. I think just looking at them, I I really, I don't because I really like the Ranger Raptor for what it does and what it's set up for. Mm -hmm. But I think for me daily driving around town, my favorite would be that, uh, the ZR2. Yeah. Um, if I wanted something to go play with, I'm, I'm getting the Ranger Raptor, I think. For yeah. sure, and if I don't want something to play with, if I want to, you know, on a tow boat, tow a small camper, take the family camping, and then also daily drive it, I'm thinking I'm getting that ZR2 or possibly that AT4, just because there's a little bit nicer interior in that AT4. But I'm looking yeah. at those two, um, especially with the new interior that Chevy and GM put out within the last couple of nice. years, for sure. Yeah. I mean, nothing against the Tacoma; <clears throat> it's just. Having driven it now, uh, you know, I want Wupow and it doesn't have any. Aesthetically, the Tacoma is <laughs> nice. It is. Yeah. I like the aesthetics, however, of I think I'd like the performance of the Ford better than the Toyota. And mm-hmm. I would like the aesthetics of the Chevy and the GM over the Tacoma. So Tacoma would be a solid second in a lot of areas. But it, I, for me, it doesn't hit first anywhere, unfortunately. Now, yeah, that makes, when the funny. iForce Max comes out, we'll talk again. But for right now, yeah, that's where I'm at in my head. <laughs> yeah. now, I think I'm with you. Um, I think for me personally, I don't think I'd ever use a Ranger Raptor for the capabilities that it has. Um, I feel like if I want to do go fast things, I'm going to build something for a go fast thing. It's not going to be a $60,000 
uh, mid-sized truck, it's going to be something I, I feel comfortable beating on. Um, so with that said, if I were in the market for one of these mid-sizes, I think I would, I think I'd have to go with a AT4X. Um, just the styling, the aggressiveness. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it does still come with the uh, mini Duramax and that coupled mm -hmm. with, I want to say, I know I said earlier, tow rating is not important really, but that coupled with a 7,700 pound tow rating, it makes it for a really, really good truck. And it just, I have sat in one of those. It looks super comfortable. Um, so I think that would be my pick. I, um, the, and, and, and we'll get to this in the three quarter ton, but that was the aesthetics was what got me between an AT4 and a ZR2. You know, the AT4 has been out for several years in the GMC mm -hmm. line. Only in 2024 did they introduce the ZR2 into the three quarter line. And it, for me, it was aesthetics. Like yeah. I looked at it, I saw the front end of the ZR2 versus the AT4, and I was like, that's the new hotness, and I got to have it. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just everybody's so different. Like somebody would listen to this and be like, you guys are crazy. The, t the combo looks way better. It's, you know, what they say, there's an ass for every seat, and it's yep. so subjective. Um, I could absolutely see somebody coming in and going, well, I like the Tacoma for this, this, and this. 100%. Yeah, you're for sure. Because everybody's needs are different. That's why I preface mine with saying, you know, my need for a truck is my daily driver. And I want to take it out. You know, I want to take it and tow some stuff and camp out of it, you know, a little bit, but not like overland. So that puts me in Chevy GM territory. If I was out west and I wanted to pull my, you know, I don't know, I wanted to pull a side by side and then go have fun in the dunes with both, I, then I'm Ranger Raptor. Mm -hmm. But then if I'm going to go overlanding and I want to go camp and live out of the truck for three, four, five days at a time, well, now I'm going to look at the Tacoma. So it all depends on what you want, which is why for me it was the Chevy, but and like for you it was the GMC. So, I mean, they're all good. These are all examples of vehicles that have been given off-road appearance, but have also been given very good off-road ability. So, yeah, you know, yeah, you know little sure. golf clap. Golf clap to all those manufacturers for doing that. And yeah. not doing with some no, they, of the other manufacturers. They to the them, industry which is straight sure. up appearance packages. Yeah. Well, moving from that into our, I guess we'll call it full size three quarter ton. Um, first off, half in, ton. in keeping half with tons. talking yep. about to talking about Ford first, um, we've got <laughs> we've got this beast, and uh, I've got to say, one of these pulled up uh, next to me the other day, and I was like, oh, that's a good looking Raptor, and then I heard it, and I was like, wait a second, that's a new Raptor R. And uh, oh, you heard rumbles. I heard rumbles. And, and let me tell you, this <laughs> thing in person, oh my god. Well, you are talking about two totally different trucks. So, kind of the people at home, there is a there is an a, a F 150 Raptor, which they don't really call it F 150, it's the Raptor. They just right. it's just called the Raptor. And that is an SVT vehicle, SVT at Ford, standing for special vehicles team. Um, kind of the developer of the old, the old scale Cobra back in the day. Um, so a standard Raptor is an EcoBoost V6. It is a V6 with two turbos, runs about 450 horsepower out of a, I think it's still a 3.5. Um, that pictured right there is the Gen 3. Gen 1 was 09. They modified it a little bit. Um, back in those days, it was still the, basically the same interior as F-150. And then they changed it, I think, in 13. And in 13 and 14, it had kind of some unique stuff. And then it went away for a couple of years. And then it came back as the Gen 2. And then the Gen 2 was around for three or four model years, and then now its its current iteration is the Generation 3. Generation 2 and Generation 3 were twin-turboed EcoBoost V6s and the 3.5 variant, which is basically the same 3.5 that you find in other vehicles, but it is tuned and modified slightly to give it that extra oomph, that extra, that extra horsepower to get it up there. They are quick trucks. I owned a Gen 2. I have not bought a Gen 3 simply because it's just a more comfortable version. Um, I think it's actually... I my personal opinion as they've gone more and more and more, they've looked better but gotten less off road capable. The original Raptor was legit built to go run Baja, and it did. Oh nine, <laughs> an oh nine Raptor ran Baja. Um, it yeah. almost didn't, um, but it did. They got it fixed. I think it was like four o'clock in the morning. They finally got the thing run. There was some fuel problems or whatever, but they finally got it running. It ran. It finished, and that was the birth of the Ford Raptor. Um, now, of course, they got Ranger Raptor, which we just talked about. But all the same stuff we talked about that they did on the Ranger Raptor, this is where it came from. It's extended wheelbase, track width, sorry. Uh, the control arms are longer. The wheels are pushed out more than a standard F-150. Uh, and by design, then, you get wider fender flares. That's why they look wider, because they are wider. You've got a completely different appearance package up front, different bumper, different grill, different lighting, all that kind of stuff, different hood. 
And now the interior, especially in Gen 3 now, is completely different than what they were on a standard F-150. I'm not even sure anymore that there's any F-150 badging to be seen on a, ra- on a Raptor. I think they completely, I think all the F-150 yeah, badging is gone. I, I think it's only Raptor badging now. And then with I think you're the right. R, uh, this, that's the one I kind of want to specifically talk about because that's the, the new hotness, right? Dude, you uh, can't compare the R <laughs> to anything else, like, like other than maybe no. the TRX, but geez. Yeah, well, well, guess what's in our mid-size thing's category? It's a freaking race truck. <laughs> yeah, it, it, so... Uh, so for those who don't know, this is a 5.2 liter supercharged V8 version yeah. of the Ford Raptor. And uh, it's it's noticeable by A, the rumble. Uh, B, it has a little Meow. R uh, underneath the D on the grill. And the Raptor badging on the back quarter panels of the truck bed, or the, uh, yeah, the truck bed will be uh, bedsides, is the ending R in Raptor is a very aggressive red R. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, this thing is is nasty. It comes with a pretty nasty price point too. It's well north of 100k, uh, but it's no. They weren't supposed to be. They were supposed <laughs> to come out like between 105 and 120. Yeah. Um, but everybody was putting like 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar markups on them, so people were buying them for between 140 and 175. Yeah. Crazy. So it's even even more crazy. Um, Brittany called me the other day on the way home from work. And she's like, oh, there's a there's a really cool Raptor in front of me. That's a really cool color. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I love the new Raptor. She was like, yeah, so good. she's like, what's a Velociraptor? I'm like, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> she's like, yeah, the the uh, the bumper and the badging says Velociraptor. She's like, is that a new Ford? And I was like, no, nope, that would be a Hennessy Customs Hennessey, Raptor yep. build that's mm-hmm. hopped up even more. And I was like. That's a pretty badass truck that you're behind. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty. Sick. I got a little excited about that one. Yeah, um, those things are nice. No, it's, it's a badass truck, and it was designed, as you said, to compete directly with the TRX, which we are going to talk about as well. Um, but so in this full size category or half ton category, um, this is one we've got, and we've also want to just kind of move forward here with the next one that we want to compare it to, uh, and just moving going in the same categories that we had before. We've got the uh, fif- uh, Silverado 1500 ZR2, uh, which I want to talk about for a second as well. It's not as cool as the Raptor R, but it's definitely a big improvement on the standard 1500. So, yeah, um, that one in the 1500 version, I've actually owned that one. Uh, I bought one when they first came out a couple years ago. Um, I had a trail boss because I wanted a ZR2, couldn't find a ZR2 because they had just released. Mm-hmm. So I bought a trail boss. I put in requests everywhere for a ZR2 and I couldn't find one. And then like a month after I bought my trail boss, because I wasn't towing, this was before racing. This was before I had to pull big stuff. I was, I was mostly a half ton guy. This was back. I'd owned an F-150 Raptor. I'd owned an F-150 non-Raptor. I had a TRX and then I, you know, I don't think I had the TRX at this point. Um, but I had the rap. I think I traded the Raptor in on the Trail Boss, and then traded the Trail Boss when a dealership called me and said, "Hey, we just got one of these ZR2s in, and the guy's financing fell through or whatever, and we're just selling it for sticker because he already put a deposit down. It was non-refundable, so we've already made our money. I ended up getting it for like a thousand under sticker at the time. And that afternoon, I was like, "Well, dude, I just bought this Trail Boss like three weeks ago. Now this was back in the height of COVID, where you were getting every dime that you paid. So I yeah, got every dime sure. that I paid for that Trail Boss back out of it." And then was able to buy the ZR2. And I kept the ZR2 for a little while. Um, it was black. And that was the first year of the 1500 ZR2. And it's the same thing we talked about with the Colorado. It's the same stuff. Uh, it's got a little bit of a lift. The front end's completely different. The bumper, the grill, all that stuff's different. It's upgraded. The hood. Um, I had the 6.2 liter variant, the big V8. They have a 5.3. Now they have it in a 5.3, a 6.2. I think the 6.2 is actually going away. But they have it in the 5.3 and the 3.0 Eco Diesel. Um, I was able to get one when they were coming out with the 6.2. And I actually kept that truck for a while. I loved that truck. It did everything I needed it to do. And like an idiot, I got rid of it and bought a TRX because I thought I wanted I thought I thought wanted supercharger noises. And every day after I got rid of that ZR2, I missed it. Um, just a great, great truck. There is an AT4 GM version. We've already talked about that, what it is in the canyon is the same thing it is in the sierra it's the same thing but the at4 version has was out already they already had the at4 version out for a couple of years uh there she is i think that's thunderstorm gray i think is that color um 
and you can see just different wheels, different bumper, different grill, that kind of stuff. Different it is styling. a little more understated mm-hmm. appearance wise on the GMC, whereas on the Chevy, it's much more it's much more obvious that it is a um, that it's a that it's a different model. I get a lot of "Hey, sweet truck man" in the parking lot, and I'm like, I haven't really done that much. I mean, I have done a little bit to it, but I haven't really changed the appearance of it that much. But it just looks so different than what you're used to seeing that it it definitely catches eye. So it's a wheel and tire thing. It's a little bit of a lift. It's the a, appearance, and then on the interior, the Chevy gets that two tone gray with the yellow stitching. Mm-hmm. It's not as different on the AT4. The AT4 does not get that yellow stitching and all that. Hmm. But again, the AT4 has been around a lot longer. Um, I think it's mostly most of those interiors are black on black um, yeah. that you can get. There is there's some I've seen that aren't, but it's mostly when the dealers are ordering them. They're ordering with that black, that nice black leather that you get in the GMCs. They're nice. But what they do to them, it's just a bigger, bigger version. Now, the AT4 does not get the DSSV shocks that the okay. ZR2 gets. There, that is that is that is a difference. It is a different so shock specific. setup. Specific. They never did. Um, nor do I think they ever are going to. That is a different mm-hmm. deal. GMC wants their trucks to ride a certain way, so they are not going to put those DSSV swivel shocks in there. And that applies across the line on AT4 versus ZR2. ZR2 is the one that gets the DSSV shocks. AT4 does not get those. However, everything else, GMC does its own version of whatever the ZR2 is. That's the GMC version other than the shocks and struts. Okay. But great trucks. Both of them great trucks. Yeah. And then now we're going to move right over to your favorite. (laughs) The T-Rex. I mean. The good old T-Rex. It it is the good old T-Rex because now now the Hellcat's going out of them. Now they're going to use that. um, It's going to be a twin turbo V6. But they say, they say performance-wise, you know, same thing. But you're going to lose that. You're going to lose that rumble. You're going to lose that. Mm Meow. It's gone. The Hellcat's going away. The supercharger wine will be gone. Yeah, but man, um, I will tell you from a from a truck that is just freaking fun to drive. Holy birthday cake, Batman! Um, <laughs> I love. I just love driving out. that truck because I love floor pinning that truck. It had yeah. launch mode. It had. Oh my god! It was amazing. The problem with it was that because <laughs> I think my average fuel economy was like seven. Um, yeah, that sounds about it right. It was not good. <laughs> it was not good. Um, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a fairly on the road. I'm actually a fairly safe driver. I don't. I'm not a speedster. I don't do stuff because I don't want speeding tickets and increase insurance. But yeah. even though, even with all of that, basically having like no points on my license, um, insurance on those was higher. It was just, but it was God. It was so fun. Um, but you know, for me, it was getting into that was when I had my TRX was getting into the time where I was going to start needing something else. And the Broncos were getting out. I actually ended up getting rid of my TRX to buy a Bronco Badlands um, when the Bronco craze was taking off. And um, that was the my, that TRX was the last half-ton truck that I've owned. I have not owned a half-ton truck since then. I got rid of the Bronco, and then I got into big trucks because I needed tow capacity. Yeah. Um, and the tow capacity on the T-Rex is low, just like just like the tow capacity on the Raptor was. It's, it's like 9,000 or less. It's not right. much. By, bypass shocks don't really make. But for, it's shocks. Um, yeah, it's the suspension. <laughs> for good, yeah, it's absolutely for the towing. suspension. Um, and the same thing with the same thing with the Raptor, who gets you know that Fox Haw stuff, that big mm-hmm. boy, you, big big Fox shocks, live valve now. I was about to um, say the, the Raptor R has live valve, which is whew. the Gen three has live valve. A- after like 20, 20, 21, 22 is when they, they it's live valve. So mm-hmm. Fox has had live valve in there for a couple of years now, and then you just got bigger batter live valve in the five two um but you've got the bill stein you've got that bill stein bypass in the um in the t-rex trx which again super awesome stuff that thing will take some dunes i think off-road capability depending on what youtube video you watch will tell you the trx is a little better will tell you the raptor is a little bit better but Mm -hmm. i think the the big thing on the trx was 702 horsepower and then raptor r came out at 700 um, I, I don't know why Ford didn't like advance the timing, make a couple runs and get like 705 just to claim they were more. I don't just, know. Just to do it. Yeah. I don't know. Just to do it. Just to say you had 705. I don't know why they didn't do it, but they didn't do well, it for whatever reason. Well, truthfully, though, if uh, if I was Ford and I knew the Hellcat was coming out, regardless of whatever engine is coming in, 
and I'm releasing a brand new engine with yeah, a fair. supercharged V8 and I don't yeah. have to stop production on those. <laughs> I mean, that in itself is a little bit of a flex, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, I, our, and I, our truck, and our V8. Probably, they were probably like, we just don't give a crap. We know that's going away. So maybe there's yeah. a little overlap, but then, you know, but the R is such a limited production and the TRX mm -hmm. is not as limited too. So, yeah, true. you know, I, I think, I guess they were made to compete with each other. But TRX just did what Ram, Ram just did what Ram does, and they're like, we're gonna stuff the most motor we could possibly stuff in this, and we don't yeah. give a damn what anybody else says. And then Ford was like, all right, we're gonna build something to compete with it. I think the Ford truck probably is a little more comfortable if you were trying to drive it around daily. Mm -hmm. um, but that six two man, that six two Hellcat. But and then they're getting seven hundred two out of a six two supercharged. Ford's getting seven hundred out of a five two supercharged. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's plus, I could, you know, I could make the argument both ways. I think they're both more out of smaller displacement. They're, they're both complete and total badasses. Yeah, absolutely. And I have no reason to think that the new TRX won't be badass, but it's going to miss the rumble rumble and the meow meow. It's going to miss yeah. that. It and I'll miss that. So, but so I, I'm of, not in that market anymore anyway, so it doesn't hurt me yeah. personally, but I'll miss the noise. Yeah, for sure. And then honorable mention there is the, uh, um, Nissan Titan again, there's nothing really special about it. The the baby Cummins version of it is terrible. It has horrible reviews. Um, techs don't know how to work on them. The V8 variant, um, I would say that they've been that V8's been around for a little while. It's it's a reliable truck, but it's it's a Nissan. You're gonna have a plasticky interior. It's Dude, it'll get the job Nissan. done. I, I mean, it's just it's just yeah. It's not on my list. It's not on. It's, my, it's not. Yeah. And, it's and not I know on some a lot of like Nissan. I get yeah. it. I would give that mention, that last mention, to the Tundra TRD Pro before I would give it to the Nissan Pro 4X or Pro 4, 4X, whatever. Um, now, I, I don't like that Tundra took out and does continues not to give us a V8 in a Tundra. They give us that turbocharged V6. Yeah, and I that, guess efficiency. this one's on me because I did not grab any pictures of the Tundra. But, yeah, we could talk about the Tundra, too. So that, I guess that should really get the honorable mention spot. I think. Um, if, I, if we're going to put it's one It's just in a that, bigger that, Tacoma, that right? It's yeah. the same stuff that they do to the Tacoma. They just do it on a Tundra. Now, the Tundra's been out a couple more years mm -hmm. now. Um, it's a really nice truck. If if I didn't need a um, – if I didn't need tow capacity, Tundra mm -hmm. would be on my list because yeah. if you don't need 700 horsepower and you don't need a $20,000 off-road package, but you want something that kind of comes in at a little bit cheaper, but it's going to give you that off-road ability, Tundra's something to look at. Tundra's right there with, I think – ZR2 AT4. Yeah. Uh, Raptor's going to be a little more expensive. Raptor's going to be a little more expensive for sure because uh, it's different. ZR2 mm -hmm. AT4 is going to be not as not as pricey as Raptor. I'm talking regular Raptor. TRD Pro is going to be down there in the 70s range where ZR2 AT4 is. Yeah. Um, Raptor's not there. They were when they first came out with the Gen 3. They're not now. They're yeah. in the 80s. They're in the 90s. So if you want to get into out of that 70s price range, you're going to have to look at Tundra TRD. And of course, there's TRD, but we're talking TRD Pro because that's the different, that's the the most off road capable one. So, yeah. I think it it's basically the same upgrades as you see in the Tacoma. When we mm -hmm. talk off road, we talk more Tacoma just because that's kind of been what it's been made famous for and and really overlanding. Um, right. But I think Tundra can be looked at just as well, um, and it's got some off road ability and really good off road appearance. For not as much as like a Raptor or a TRX or something like that, it's in that it's in that ZR2 price range. So I think I don't think it's going to go as hard off road as like a ZR2 is, mm -hmm. but I think it's it's a more it's a very comfortable truck that gets you that off road appearance and gives you some actual nods to off road performance as well. So it's definitely one to look at for sure. It probably wouldn't be number one on my list, but in half ton in half tons, it's up there. It's close. It's up there. It's very, so what is it's number very one on close. List? Uh, still ZR2. I mean, I had it. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Again, you know, I've got to kind of keep a budget in mind because, yeah, I like the TRX. I love the TRX. But for me, I'm not buying a truck to go to the the track. If I was, yeah. it'd be a TRX or a Raptor R. Love those trucks. But me, again, I'm a guy that's going to daily drive the truck. I'm going to tow a little bit of stuff. I'm going to take the kid to sports balls practice, you know. And, you know, I need that. So I'm going to be looking at something that looks looks cool. Gives me a little bit of actual cool guy performance, but it's not going to cost me hundred thousand dollars. So I'm going to be looking ZR2, um, maybe AT4, but probably more ZR2 for me. And I and my second would be the uh, 
the TRD Pro Tundra. Nice. Well, I think I would actually put them in that order as well because I did ride in your um, your fifteen hundred and I really did like it. And I also rode in your, nice your Hellcat truck. one time, and it was but again super fun vehicles. Uh, I don't think the Raptor R is for me as much as I love it and as good lo- as it looks. I just that kind of, dropping that kind of money is very unrealistic. It's you know for people around Lake Norman, there's several people that are like, oh, that's nothing. But right for most normal people, that's pretty far out of the out of the, the pricing category there yeah, compared to the production. Rest of the so that's why too. It's yeah, it's absolutely yeah. Um, and then kind of wrapping up the truck category here, we are going to move into HD trucks, which you also have. A hey, lot hey. of experience with, <laughs> so this is going to be the first one. It's almost identical to the uh, the F two fifty you had, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. So Ford starting out with F two fifty F three fifty with the trimmer package, um, and I I think this is probably one of the best looking Fords on the road today. Yeah, so buddy, mine literally like two doors down from me in the office complex has a um, like a grabber blue or velocity blue, whatever color. I think it's velocity blue. Uh, he has a trimmer. Um, just like that, that body style. Actually, I think it's, it's the, it's a 22 because that's the body style you're showing there is 23, 24. Mm-hmm. Uh, so trimmer is basically just their off-road variant. It's not, it doesn't do a ton of stuff other than it was actually, there's some skid plates. There's a little bit of a lift from the factory. It's more like a level lift. Um, and then there's some black stuff. There's some, it's mostly an appearance package with a small lift thrown in and it does mm-hmm. get different wheels. Um, so they did throw some stuff at it. It is more, I don't think you're going to be taking a three quarter ton truck and bombing it anywhere, like anywhere. So it was more for looks, I think, than it was anything else. Um, it doesn't change the motor. It doesn't change the shocks. It doesn't change the axles. It doesn't do that stuff, but it does, you know, it does give you different tire, you know, you know, your tires, your wheels are going to be different. There's going to be more black stuff on there. You're going to have that trimmer badging on it. And then you're going to have that little bit, just a little bit of a lift um, above like, you know, an XLT or, or a Lariat, something like that. So, uh, yeah. And I will say I didn't find a really good, like clean, big picture of a completely stock F250, F350 trimmer, which is why this one, this one's clearly lifted, you know, four, five inches, six inches. Uh, it's, it's pretty lifted. So I will guarantee you that is probably only lifted like two inches over a trimmer. Really? They're they're That's they're tall from the factory. They're very very tall from the factory. That is very and, interesting. So I didn't yeah, even realize they were they were that tall. Uh, moving they're, over, they're to only like an inch shorter, I think, than a ZR2. Oh wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. So moving over to to the ZR2 variant. This is hey my truck here, <laughs> and this is your current truck. So let's let's talk about your current truck for just a minute here. Yeah. So. You know, the reason I bought it was what you're looking at right here. I really, really was really two reasons over what I had in the Ford. Um, I had a 22 Ford, loved it. Great truck. Uh, probably shouldn't have gotten rid of it, but I got a 23 um, and I tried to let it grow on me. The The grill and all that, as you just saw, that was the new grill. It never really grew on me. And the 24 ZR2 came out during that time and the ability to do stuff to it. So I looked at a ZR2 when they first came out and nobody had anything for him because everything's a little bit different and there is some suspension differences on it and nobody really had anything for it that was going to work. Um, we, we got some stuff now, obviously back then we didn't. So I went from almost signing on the dotted line of buying a ZR2 to buying that F two fifty, and then bought the F three fifty, both great trucks That F three fifty had the 1200 pound foot torque high output engine and toes, you know, the London bridge. Um, but I really, really, really loved the look of the ZR two. I love the grill. I love the hood. I love the bumper. I loved everything about it. And then they they finally put the new interior that came out like 21 and a half, 22 in the 1500. They finally put that new interior with the new everything in that Chevy ZR2, which was my knock on Chevy for years was their interior. It was old. It was outdated. It was kind of what everybody said about the old 4Runner and the old Tacoma and all that. It was just mm-hmm. outdated, and I didn't like sitting in it. And the inside probably matters more to the owner and the driver than the outside because that I'm inside the truck when I'm driving it. Yeah, it has to be sure. laid out right. It has to be comfortable. It has to be something that I'm willing to pay that much money for. And when they did that and I was able to find one, I snatched it up and have never looked back. Um, is it as powerful as my high output F-350? Um, no. Does it still tow everything I need it to tow? Um, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I bumper pull with this. I have a fifth wheel in the back. It tows fifth wheel like 14,000 pounds, no problem. It tows the race trailer, which is a bumper pull, like 13, 14,000 pounds, no problem. It pulls anything I need it to pull. And then day to day, it just, I love it. I just love the look of it. Like, you know, I feel like it's like with Jeep people when they have to look back at their Jeep all the time. I just want to go into mm-hmm. Home Depot. And I did that this morning. I was walking into Home Depot to get some bolts for somebody at the shop. And I just wanted to look back at it and be like, man, that's a good looking freaking truck. It and the only thing I've done it, to mine is we leveled it up with some different leveling keys. So we got the front mm-hmm. end up. And with that on these, you can clear 37s on a zero offset wheel. So it has some wheels on it. It has some 37s um, on a level. And then I put um, a bed cover on it. I put some amp power steps on it. That's it. And so that's all, really all it needs. Yeah, and that's same, it. And I had, I had some cool. Thing with this one. I had some carbon fiber wrap put around the multi-flex tailgate. I had the multi-flex tailgate, so the piece that's inset into the back tailgate. Yeah. I had that wrapped in carbon fiber, which was pretty cool. And that's really all I've done to it. It, it doesn't have any graphics or anything like that. I just love that truck. You know, I was I bought that truck, and now because my Jeep is still out at Next Venture Motorsports getting a bunch of Next Venture stuff done to it, you know, the, really the only options I have to drive around on the daily are my old Ram 2500, which is basically a shop truck, or my ZR2, and my ZR2 has become the daily driver. And yeah. I don't even know that it wouldn't be my daily driver if I had the 4 by e here. I just love driving it. I love sitting in it. I love driving it. It's comfortable. It looks super freaking cool. People talk. People make looks and comments and all that. And I just love the truck. So uh, it does have those spool valve shocks. Again, we talked about it. The same thing that we talked about in the half ton applies to the three-quarter ton. You can get the big gas motor in the 2500. I have the uh, 6.6. Duramax and the new 10 speed transmission, which is a game changer. That was the co developed 10 speed transmission between Ford and GM. That's a great transmission. It changed a lot of things. And the newer motor, I think it's got 470 horsepower and like a, right at a thousand pound feet of torque. So it tows everything mm-hmm. I need it to tow. It does a great job. It's got a bigger fuel tank than my Ford had. So I like that. So, um, and the ZR2 gives it the skid plates, it gives it the appearance stuff. But it also gets me those DSSV shocks, and I've I have taken it off road. I've taken it on a bunch of gravel roads. I took it up old NC one hundred and five. Um, I've taken it up through my in laws' cabins in Virginia numerous times, which is miles of gravel roads, and we just let loose and have fun. Put it in four auto and just let her rip tater chip, and it's yeah. a lot of fun. That IFS, it is the only three quarter ton truck out there with IFS. You know, you look at the trimmer. No, you look at the Ram Rebel. You look at all that stuff. The you know the power wagon. All those. This is the only IFS truck. And that makes a difference for a daily driver. It's a lot yeah, different driving sure. this thing around town than both my F-250 and my F-350. Um, and that made a little bit of a difference to me because, as I've said in the other categories, uh, I won't say it again what I need, but we know what I need out of a truck. This truck does what I need it to do. The Ford did too, but the Chevy just fits me a little, fits me personally just a little bit better for my situation and my needs and wants. Yeah, and I would agree that the uh, both the... Silverado and the Sierra and the 2500, 3500 variants. Whew, I think they both look way better than the Ram or the uh, the Ford F250, F350. But speaking of, now we've got the AT4. So following suit with this one, it's going to be so the same as the AT4 with the 1500, but not the DSS shocks. Correct. Yep. Um, but the styling looks good, and especially mm-hmm. with the X package being that Bison package AEV, the collaboration there, that looks ooh. It looks great. Yeah, that's um, definitely but, an X. Um, as far as drivetrain specs and off-road capability, we're probably, other than shocks, we're looking probably very roughly similar to the Chevy uh, 2500. So I'm not gonna, I'm not going to harp on that one for too, too long. But yeah, that's just just so we can kind of see that too and see the comparison there. It is a beautiful truck and uh, beautiful truck, one that I think sure. anyone would, would love to have, really. Um, and then moving on to our final category here or final um final model here rather than category is the good old ram good 2500 old ram. uh in the off-road world you have the power wagon and the rebel the rebel's a very it's a newer version i think and and you can correct me if i'm wrong here i think both of them look very similar uh i'm not entirely mm-hmm. sure on the differences of these two so enlighten me on uh on those two models well i mean it's it's an appearance thing um there is a little bit more off-roady stuff in in the rebel i didn't get much into the ram when i shopped for one reason and it's the transmission um 
when up until the ASIN six speed, ASIN's a good transmission, but it was a six speed. Um, I didn't understand what the hesitancy was to develop something different. Um, they've put an eight speed in almost everything else that they've made. Now, now they are going to put an eight speed in the Ram. Um, but I, I don't know why you just didn't go to a ten speed. I don't. I don't understand that. Um, they are now the oldest interior. You know, what, 18, 19, they came out with a big 12 screen and everybody freaked out. Um, they haven't redesigned it since. And Ford came out with their new one. And now Chevy has the newest of the big three. So now Ram is, Ram, I think, is in need of, uh, it needs, they're adding some of these little models like the Ram. You know, they came out with a power wagon several years ago. And that was basically the six, that was a 392 and a 2500, basically. That's what that was. Um, it was a big old gas engine and a 2500. I actually knew a guy who had one. And it made all the rumbles and stuff. And then the Rebel got a little bit more of an off roady. Um, they gave it a little bit more off road, and you can get it with um, you can get it with the Cummins diesel in it. Yeah, um, which is what, what I got showing right now. It's the right, Rebel exactly. The there it is right there. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. That's the Rebel with the with the Cummins in it. So, you know, Cummins has a has a very dedicated fan base. Obviously, that is an inline six diesel, not a V eight diesel like all of the other trucks that we've talked about in this category. Um, but it still makes plenty of power. It does. I mean, Cummins is the, is the kind of the staple of of diesels. It's it, it haven't changed it a lot um, over the years. They've added, you know, that when they went from twelve valve to twenty four valve, all that stuff. Twelve guy, valve guys are their own unique variety of of guys. Um, but I mean, the motor is stout. It's a six seven inline six, so it's the same displacement as like the Power Stroke. Power Stroke six seven V eight. The Cummins is a six seven inline six. So it's a little bit different. And then the Duramax is a 6.6 V. So they're all pretty much the same on displacement. And they're now they're now all really, really close on power outside of the Ford HO, which is basically a tune. Um, some people had claimed having problems with those. I never had a problem with mine. But Ram just didn't get in my wheelhouse simply because they haven't changed the design in five or six years. They haven't changed the interior. It's basically the same. And... They had some options issues, like you had to go to a limited to get adaptive cruise, and there was some there were some other things. But I'm going to tell you, pound for pound, option for option, Ram got expensive. I I don't know what happened there. It, it was just like we talked about with with the Gladiator. Like I don't know where this came from. Why is the Gladiator option for option so much more than its Chevy, Ford, and Toyota counterparts? Why is the Ram so much more than its Ford and Chevy and GM counterparts? I don't. I don't understand that. Um, I know what Ram would tell you, but I just don't understand that when you're not putting out, you, you know, you're not there. There, you, know, you can make the argument on power and horsepower and all that. It still is going to tow. It's going to do fine. You can make the, they, they have their off-road packages. They have appearance. They have one that's appearance and performance. They have all of that stuff, but they haven't really updated it in five model years at least. Um, they haven't updated the interior in five model years. So I don't understand why. I just don't understand why it's so expensive. Um, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. But when I looked at it option for option, I would have paid ten grand more for a Ram, forgetting the off road stuff. I yeah. would have still paid almost eight to ten grand more for the Ram to get the same stuff that I would have gotten in the Chevy or a Ford. And I just couldn't see doing that for then a six speed transmission, <clears throat> now an eight, when mm -hmm. I could get a ten speed. And the most updated interior features and all that, my heads-up display, you know, the, the center console that I've got, all of that stuff, I get more aesthetics that I like, and I still pay ten grand less. Yeah, I just couldn't see it. So I think Ram's in need, and, and I'm sure they're doing this. I, I have no doubt that there's an entire team of engineers at Ram already about to tease the next generation Ram. I, I you got to know it's coming. It just yeah, that's, shown that up was yet. kind of my thought process as well. But also, I feel like out of that group of HD trucks, I feel like the Ram is the least off-road capable. Um, I feel like there's nothing I'd really special that. about the yeah. Rebel or the Power Wagon that screams like this is an off-road suspension or heavy-duty shocks yep. or Agreed. anything like that. I think definitely more so an appearance package. Whereas the the other models, I feel like for sure, and um, and I think I know what your winner is here because you kind of own it, and I I think I agree with you 100 there. I think I would probably go with the Chevy just because of the DSS shocks on that one. Not that you're going to go bomb a you know a 2500 through through an off road trail, but 
just having uh, some capability to be able to run like like you said, old North Carolina 105, which is just a gravel, uh, unmaintained gravel road. So it does get kind of chewed out. Um, so yeah, I think I'm with you there, and uh, I I just can't see myself owning a a new Ram for that reason, um, especially when we're talking about most off road capable. Um, is it a good truck? Sure. Um, but I think they're now that it's the oldest of the group. Um, I think there are definitely some better options out there. Yeah. And I have no problem with the Ford. Like I said, I owned one. I own the 250 mm-hmm. I own the 350. The only reason I got rid of the 350. Um, well, it was two reasons. One, one was something Ford did. One was something Chevy did. The thing that Ford did was I just, for me personally, subjectively, the grill, the front end just didn't grow on me. That was it. No other knock to how it was laid out. No other knock to the interior, no other knock to the features, the pry, all that was fine. I had no problem with it. It did its job exceptionally well. It was a great truck. That was what Ford did. What did Chevy do? Well, Chevy basically made a truck the way I would have made it. So aesthetically and subjectively, I just love the way the Chevy looks. I love that ZR2 appearance package. And then they gave me the interior that I wanted, which is why I wouldn't have had a 2500 before because I didn't like the interior. They gave us everything they gave the Silverado back in 22. They put it in the 24 finally. And because of that, it was kind of the perfect storm for me to go out and buy that Chevy. And now now I've, I don't even shop for other trucks. I've been notorious for a long time for getting in and out of vehicles very, very quickly. And for right now, at least, I say I'm not even shopping because I have to have at least a three-quarter ton truck. I have to. I have to be able to pull 14,000, 15,000 pounds. I have to be able to tow a gooseneck. So I am really limited to the big three. Um, so I can't really shop Ford because I just got rid of a Ford for the reasons we just talked about. I'm not going to shop Ram because we know what's coming. It's an eight speed. But we're, we're good. So we're at least two years off from Ram getting a 10 speed. And I'm thinking at that time we'll get an interior. So maybe when that happens, I'll look, we'll see. But, and there's no reason for me to get another GM product. So there's really nothing for me to look at. Um, you know, my wife still rolls her eyes, but I'm like, but, but just be logical. Like, what else would I buy? Like, for what I have to have, I don't have a choice. I cannot go out and buy a TRX. I cannot go out and buy a Ranger, a, a Raptor for what I have to have. I'd have to, I'd have to keep a three quarter ton truck and then buy another vehicle, which I really already did with the four by E. So there's really no reason for me to get out of it. So for me, I've kind it's like, it's like I've found home. <laughs> I have found my truck home. You, you have found your place. ZR2. You found your people. Right. And um, there's really no logical yeah. reason to think anything else is coming down the pipe in the next 12 to 18 months, minimum, probably 18 to 24 months. So, you know, I think I'm going to hold serve and stick where I'm at. I'm really, really happy with where I'm at. And I love my truck. So, I, you know, Cummins guys are Cummins guys and they're going to love their Rams. Totally understand that. Ford guys are Ford guys. I totally get that. I used to be a Ford guy. I was hammered down Ford. It was Ford, 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 Ford. And then I started buying other trucks and experiencing other trucks and started realizing, you know, maybe I'm not just going to say one brand, one brand, one brand, because these brands change, right? Chevy's completely different in this truck that I now have than what it was two years ago. It's a completely different truck. And and for me, that was those were good changes. For some people, they may have been bad changes, and they may have kicked them out, and now those guys are Ford guys. Who knows? But for me, my 2500ZR2 is the perfect truck for me. It does everything I need it to do, and I have no reason to go look elsewhere. Now, somebody's going to refer back to this episode in a year when I buy another truck, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but for right yeah. now, I have no reason right to Right now, shop. you're good. Yeah. Right, yeah, no, right I think now, I'm, I'm, with I'm you. awesome. Uh, I think if I were in the market for an HG truck, I think I'd, I'd be right there in the in the Chevy category as well. It's just such a good-looking truck. It's, it's kind of hard to to look elsewhere, um, and I'm with you. I don't. The Ford grill is just not growing on me. Um, I'm just, I'm not there. Maybe it will at some it. point, you know, maybe it will. Maybe. Um, to me personally, just it, something off, looks off the Chevy, every Chevy 2500 I see that I'm like, Ooh, that's a good looking truck. So, well, you think um, about it like the, Oh, the Oh eight to Oh 10 super duty. I mm-hmm. love that body style. Yeah. I loved it. I thought it was so sick with the six, four twin turbo, but the, uh, the, yeah, the compound turbo setup is freaking sweet. And then it came out in the 11 with that double bar grill. I freaking hated it. Mm-hmm. 11 to 16, I'll never own one. I've never owned one. I'll never, I, I yeah. just couldn't do it. Then they came out with the 17. And at the first, I was like, eh, I don't love it, but I love it a lot more than I like the 11 to 16. Now, 17 to 22 is my favorite Ford Super Duty design ever. I love that design. Um, if it was, if it was still around, I'd probably still have a Ford. 
And then when they changed it in 23, I saw it and typically I thought it would grow on me. Now we're two model years into it and I'm still like, I, I just, I, it's not for me, you know, it's not for me, but you know, I, I do think overall it's a very nice looking truck and there's nothing wrong with it. I can't stress that enough. There, that truck, the engine, the transmission, the options, the way it's built is a freaking outstanding truck. It is literally the only reason I got rid of it was aesthetics and I had something better for me. And that's why I bought the ZR2. The Ford's a great truck. We've already talked about the Ram. I have some issues with the Ram that need some changes. Um, hashtag I blame Scott. Um, even though he has nothing to do with Ram, he still works for Stellantis. Um, but I, I got to think that I got to think that Ram's already on that, has been on that for several years because these things take years. Oh, yeah. If you don't think they're already, you know, already thinking about what the next Wrangler is going to be in six years or what the next F 150 is going to be or what the next mm-hmm. Honda Accord is going to be, you're insane because yeah. it takes m- millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to develop these and years. So we, I know the next Ram's coming. Yeah, somebody already knows what that sucker is going to look like. They already know what motor. They already know what train. It's, it's going to be a thing. What year model? I don't know. Could be a twenty. Could be a twenty. It's not going to be a twenty five. Yeah, could be a twenty six. Could be a twenty eight. I don't know. I don't think they'll put it out much past twenty seven or twenty eight. My guess yeah. would be twenty six with all the stuff that Chevy's doing, what Ford's done, and we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah, and then we'll do this well, all over again in two years. Yeah, I mean, if we have to have that another conversation Absolutely. again, that's totally fine. Um, yeah. Now, I do know this this episode's gone a little bit longer. Do we have some time for some mailbag questions, or do you want to go ahead and wrap it up here? Let's let we can rapid fire them. You've got some questions that weren't like personal to me questions, like it was last week. Let's go ahead and answer the questions because again, yeah. we're doing these all in one episode now, so yeah. you know we're wrapping a bunch of stuff in, and we've covered a bunch of stuff. So um, yeah. if you guys will hang around for just a few more minutes, we'll get into just our last segment, the mailbag. <laughs> we'll get this done, get this wrapped up, and I'll try to be as quick as I can uh, yep. with my answers. So we'll jump right into it then. Uh, this one is from a uh, Wrangler JL group. What is the most com- most useful comm radio for off-roading now that C- CB radio is pretty much dead? Yeah, CB is practically dead. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to hit the most people is probably GMRS. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a fan of programmable radios, VHF, UHF. But I also understand that most people aren't going to go out and program their frequencies and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I run an M1 radio in the 4xE. I run an M1 radio from Rugged in the race car, and I've got those programmed where I am able to talk on GMRS. Um, But that is not something that's super easy to do. So I I think GMRS is probably the way it's going to go because most of these little click-click, walkie-talkies, their Mm -hmm. channel numbers are GMRS channels. Yeah. Um, so if you have a GMRS handheld, if you have a GMRS, you know, rugged radio makes a couple great GMRS radios you can install. I think GMRS is probably the next, I don't know if it's the next thing. I think it's just, is the thing now. I, and I had this conversation with, with Jesse out at Nashville a couple weeks ago and was trying to get him to an M1. And I'm thinking about it and I'm like, you know, why does he need, he doesn't need that. And then we ended up, he ended up on a, he ended up on a GMRS radio. So, um, I think a GMRS 45 or whatever from Rugged. So, yeah, I think GMRS is probably – that's probably the – that's the, that's the thing now. And that's it probably will be for the next several years. Yeah. Radio technology is um, a little bit slower than the rest of offer technology that I've seen. It yeah. sticks around for a little bit longer. I mean, Lord mm-hmm. knows CBs were around for decades. Way too, long. Um, too long. So, yeah. I agree with you there. Um, next question. Do you recommend changing the coil pack and spark plugs together or just a coil pack or just spark plugs? And should I go with OEM or aftermarket spark plugs? Uh, I don't recommend changing a coil pack unless it dies. Okay. And, and you'll know because it'll throw a check engine light and you'll have a dead spark, you know, cylinder three, cylinder two, cylinder six, whatever. There's no reason to replace a coil pack. That's not a service item. It's not a maintenance item. A spark plug, however, is it's a wear item. The actual arm and the electrode on the, on the spark plug will wear. Um, with laser iridiums and laser platinums and all that, they take a lot longer to wear these days. Mm-hmm. Um, 100, 000, 90 to 100,000 100, is pretty normal these days. For And I think you, you find laser iridium, laser platinum, laser iridium, whatever. Basically, all laser is it means that both pieces are the same. Instead of one piece being iridium, they're both. So we call it laser iridium, whatever. Um, so, and what I mean by that, I mean, you know, you got the arm of the spark plug and then you got the pad and the spark jumps between the arm and the pad, uh, the electrode. So I think most are iridium now, some are platinum still, but, um, so yeah, I would only change the spark plugs at the, I would always recommend changing your spark plugs at the, whatever your user manual says at the severe service interval, 
because no one drives normal service intervals. Nobody goes out and preheats their car and drives exactly the, no, we none of us drive quote unquote normal. That's something they do under perfect conditions that they try to extend service intervals. So always treat your vehicles, service intervals under the severe service. Always, 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 always. Um, and anybody that wants to debate me on that, I will debate them and tell them why they're wrong. So I've been in the maintenance game for far too long. So right. always do that. And when it says change them, change them. As far as brand, um, the OEs don't make their own spark plugs. There's only X amount of manufacturers of spark plugs. And I used to be one of the guys that was like, Ford and Chevy get this brand, and GM gets this brand, and Chrysler gets this brand. And da, da, da. I don't do that anymore. Um, I just say, you know, make sure that the type of spark plug that was in there, was it platinum? Was it laser platinum? Was it iridium? Was it, you know, whatever. Whatever was in there, just make sure that goes back in there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not, you don't, don't change the material. Um, they are designed to fire a certain way with a certain voltage and different materials fire different ways. Um, especially some of the Asian cars, if it calls for iridium, you put platinum in there, it won't run right. Yeah. Um, and you know, you'll do a fresh tune up and you'll be like, why does this car not run right? And it's because you use platinum and not iridium. It makes a difference. So if you have an iridium plug, use an iridium plug. If you have a platinum plug, use a platinum plug. And, you know, there's really no difference. If you've got an NGK, you know, and you put a Denso in there, it's not going to hurt it. If you have a Bosch and you put a Champion in there, it's not going to hurt it. You know, these OEMs have contracts with these because of a lot of factors, but some of them are cost. Some of them are just because they've been doing it forever. But that does not mean you have to use the exact same brand and the exact same plug and the exact same part number. You certainly can, but you don't have to. Just make sure it's the same material and then change them out basically by your OE, by your manufacturer's severe service mileage or time intervals, whichever is first. Makes sense to me. Last question I got, and this one I've seen um, quite often on on several Wrangler and Gladiator groups. Um, it's the dreaded hinge bubbling rusting. Oh, and come Scott on, asking, man. Why his brand new hinges are rusty? <laughs> because you've been on too many Facebook groups. Yeah, absolutely. I, look, man, if there was a solution, they would have already done it. They would have already known it. I mean... Yeah. The material's different. The hinge material's different than the door material. Like, there's a whole lot of reasons, but, I mean, it is a problem. I'm not going to say it's not a problem. It is a problem. Um, I think, I don't think it's as big a problem as Facebook would lead you to believe it is. Um, I think the people that get it fixed are the people that basically just go to the dealer and say, look, I got this problem. I know it's an issue. Can you guys fix it? And they get it fixed. I think the people that bitch about it are the people that go in there to the dealer's guns blazing. Yeah, people. The dealership didn't paint your car. <laughs> the right. dealership didn't build your car. If you want to bitch no. at somebody, bitch <laughs> at FCA Stellantis. They're the ones yeah. that built the car, but you can't because you're not going to get them on the phone. So I think the people that get it fixed are the people that understand that and they go in kind of, hey, look, you know, this is the issue. You know, can we get it fixed? Now, are all dealerships great and wonderful and hunky dory? No, of course not. There are idiots that no, work no. at dealerships, just like there's idiots that work at McDonald's, just like there's idiots that work everywhere. Um, but I think if you keep your head about you and you take it that way and you're like okay this is an issue i know we need to fix it you're more likely to get it fixed and if you go in there and freaking guns blazing doubled 12 barrels drawn you know taking pot shots at the service rider who has nothing to do with how your jeep was built nothing right nothing right. uh they're just there to try to sell some services and feed their family people um so i think you know yeah it's an issue i get it it is an issue you're not wrong um i just think we need to you know take a beat Take a step back. Understand that just because you saw it a few times on Facebook, it is not. I don't. I don't think it's a prevalent issue. I actually don't. I don't think it's so serious that I would say it's in most vehicles or even in a high percentage of vehicles. I think it's in enough that there's an issue, and I think there is something probably triggering it. There's probably some root cause that you would find as some commonality. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know, and I don't even know that scientists knows what it is because I've heard of newer ones having the same issue. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it's like one of those medical dramas, right? It's like house. You pull out the, <laughs> is it lupus or is it different metals? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it probably no is lupus. It probably is. Um, <laughs> for all you house fans out there, there you go. I gave you one. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I do know it's an issue and I hate the people are having it. I wish they weren't. I wish they weren't. I wish it wasn't an issue. But it is. But I think, you know, you just, you know, try to deal with people as nice as you can. Until they show you that they're an idiot, and then you go to somebody else. You know, maybe maybe that's the solution. I don't know, but I know people right. are getting it fixed. I've heard of people getting entire 
um, new paint job side of it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So call around, yeah. get the get the right dealership that's used to dealing with it and has dealt with it mm-hmm. before. Probably they have a process for dealing with it, and it probably make and it easier. Probably have their with. own body shop or collision for sure. Center. And it's, it's, and it's entirely gonna, possible. Yeah, it's probably do the research. More you know, likely. do some legwork. And I get yeah. you don't think you should have to because it's. I understand all of that, but this is the situation we find ourselves in. This is what it is. So you yeah. think you're just going to have to deal with it a little bit. And if you want to keep the vehicle, you're probably going to have to deal with it. And you probably are because you're not going to sell it or get rid of it because there's the issue. So you got to get to get the issue yeah. fixed. Just, you know, it sucks. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to deal with it. So you might as well try to make the best of a bad situation, I guess. Yeah. And I will add to that and say that if anyone does have that issue, um, don't your first reaction shouldn't to be call the dealer and scream at them and, and say you got a limit or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeep has a customer service directory called Jeep Cares. Um, there are live people on the other end of that. Um, that mm-hmm. is their entire job. Reach out to Jeep Cares first, file a claim, get your ticket. They'll direct you generally to the closest dealership that has a body shop or has some experience in repairing that. It might not be the one you like. It might not be the closest one to you, but it's going to be one that they have had the experience of repairing that with. And then they'll send that ticket to that dealership and they'll they'll work it out. You might have to stay on Jeep Cares a little bit. You might have to stay on the rash. You might have to call them more than one time. It's there. But Good advice. Uh, before like you go into a dealership guns a-blazing and screaming at the service yeah. rider, um, yeah, try to go through the right channels to do that first. Uh, I've seen several cases of this happening and the, always the ones that become the more successful stories or the, the better stories that end up on Facebook always started with, well, I reached out to Jeep cares. Um, so that is yep. the route to get it fixed. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. I didn't even think about that, but that's a good, that's a good, good point. Good point. Way to wrap up the show with some good advice there. Good stuff. I try my best. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, I think that's it. Are we done? Yeah, that's it. Another that's episode it in the books. Another episode in the books. Another episode in the books. Man, we covered a lot of ground today. Yeah, I know we went long, everyone, but we did. We definitely covered a lot of ground, and uh, I'm still liking this format. I think it's good stuff. We'll try to not talk as much. Maybe next week, or maybe we will. I don't know. Plenty of podcasts go one to two hours. We don't. I don't think we're ever going to go two. Uh, no, no. This was a good one. This was a good one. One to one and a half is probably as long as I want to go. That'd yeah, it was right good. there. Yeah, so. I got other stuff to do anyway. So, yeah, we're going to wrap this up uh, as we always do by thanking each and every one of you. Uh, especially those ones watching on YouTube, because you got you got to get a little interactive with us today with all of our imagery and our new little background. And as you can see across the bottom here, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on YouTube Podcasts, and of course here on the video feed with YouTube. Uh, we're finding the Dirt to Dust Podcast, and of course we are presented and brought to you by Outlaw Off Road. <sighs> I don't really think I think that's how. Yeah, that's it, man. I that's think that's where I'm going to leave it. Thank mm-hmm. you to everyone. Do remember, as always, I, I, I got to get this in. Make sure that you are liking, commenting, subscribing, and on YouTube hitting the notification bell so that you get notified when we drop the issues, uh, the new issue of our new magazine issue of Dirt to Dust every Friday <laughs> when we do the episode drop. So uh, make sure that you are doing that. We appreciate it. Um, please make sure to subscribe. We're getting all that kind of getting all those numbers up so that we can keep bringing you the content because we enjoy doing it. So with that. That is how we will leave it. We thank each and every one of you. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Have a great weekend. Have a great whatever you're about to have. Until next week when we see you here on Dirt to Dust. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.